one big area that we'll use derivatives for is when we're finding out how fast things are changing. So we're going to be looking at rates of change. And um, what will be helpful when we're working with calculus is being able to tell the difference between an average rate of change and an instantaneous rate of change. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to compare the average and instantaneous rates of change of a function. So first of all, let's just look at what does it mean for something to have an average rate of change or for an instantaneous rate of change. For an average rate of change, it's just the change over the interval. You have dealt with this quite often. It's just going to be equal to um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so it's just the old-fashioned way of finding the slope. In an instantaneous rate of change, we're looking for at that specific point in time what's happening. So again, we're looking for right at that spot, so we're looking for like the tangent line, the slope of that tangent line there. So when I ask you for an instantaneous rate of change, I'm actually, actually asking you for derivative. They're both slopes, but this is the slope this one's the slope of a secant line, which touches a function in two places. And the second one is looking for the slope of the tangent line. All right, let's take a look at an example. Example 7, it says f of t is equal to t squared minus 3. What is the average rate of change on the interval 2 to 2.1? First of all, just to let you know, in this interval, these are both t values. Okay, so from t equals 2 to t equals 2.1, what's the average rate of change? So the average rate of change is just the slope of the secant line. So we just need to find y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You will notice, actually, we are just given t values. So what we need to do is come up here and actually make two points. So we actually are given the point 2 something and 2.1 something. And we need to figure out what those are. So if I plug 2 into this function, you'll notice 2 squared is 4 minus 3 is 1. If I plug 2.1 in, I get 4.41 minus 3, which will give me 1.41. Okay, so those are my two points. If I'd like to find the average rate of change, again, I'll just do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That will give me 1.41 minus 1 over 2.1 minus 2 which will give me 0.41 over 0 0.1. 0 0.41 divided by 0 0.1 is equal to 4.1. So that's the average rate of change on that interval. The next question is what is the instantaneous rate of change at the endpoints of the interval? So what is the rate of change at t equals 2? And what is the rate of change at t equals 1? At t equals 2.1. Since it's instantaneous, it's asking for the derivative. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find the derivative of this function. So the derivative is going to equal 2t, and it will be nothing else than that because the derivative of 3 is just 0. So since it's said for at the endpoints, I'm going to actually find the derivative at 2. So if I plug 2 in, I'll get 4. And then if I want to find it at the other endpoint, I'll find the derivative at 2.1. So 2 times 2.1 will equal 4.2. So those are the instantaneous rate of changes at the endpoints of the interval. That's the difference between the two. So hopefully now you can compare the average rate of change versus the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a point.